Hey guys, my original plan for today was to make a video showing how to set up file cloud. But then I realized that like half the video was going to be uh, showing how to set up traffic. And I didn't really want to uh, make the video more convoluted than it needed to be. So in this video, what we're going to do is set up traffic. And then in a later video, I'll show you how to use uh, file cloud with traffic in order to get uh, access to your uh, files remotely. So in order for you to follow along with this video, there will be a couple of things that you'll need. Uh, the first is a domain name. Uh, this can be whatever domain name you want it to be. You just need a, a domain name that's free that you can use to access your home server. The other thing that you're going to need is a Cloudflare account. Uh, you can get a free account. That's what I've been using for years and years and years now. And it works very well and it's, it's secure. It provides the SSL that you'll need. So we're not gonna use Let's Encrypt. We're actually going to use Cloudflare's SSL uh, to secure all of our traffic back and forth. So the first thing that you'll need to do uh, once you've got your domain name and your uh, Cloudflare account set up is actually point your domain name to Cloudflare. And when you set up your account on Cloudflare, it will have given you two name servers to use uh, to point to uh, rather than uh, the default name servers that came with your domain name. Uh, they've got really good tutorials on how to set up uh, your Cloudflare from a bunch of different uh, domain providers. Uh, so go ahead and use one of their tutorials on how to set up the domain to point to Cloudflare. Now, once you've got that, then we can move forward. So here we are on my desktop and we can see that I'm logged into my Cloudflare account. Uh, we can see that I'm going to be using uh, the domain name dbtechdemo.com for the purposes of these videos. Um, next to that though, um, you'll actually have to create this record. It's going to be an A record. So all you've got to do, uh, you may have to click on add record to get this line to show up. Uh, you'll just click on a record <clears throat> uh, in the name field, this first field right here, you can actually just type at and then from there, the IPv4 address, that's gonna be the IP address to your home. That's not the address to your server, that's the address to your home. Uh, if you need to know how to get that, you can actually just go to Google, type in what's my IP, and Google will tell you what your IP address is. Uh, you'll enter that uh, in this address uh, area right here. You'll wanna make sure that it's proxied, and then you'll click Save. Uh, so I've already done that with this domain name. Uh, you can't see the IP address in there. I've blurred it, um, but that it's got my home IP address in there so that it knows how to communicate uh, back and forth between the domain name and my server. Okay, so there's one thing that I almost forgot to put in the video, and that is what kind of settings you'll need for your SSL on Cloudflare. So let's take a quick look at that. So here we are on my Cloudflare dashboard uh, for my dbtechdemo.com URL. Um, and so basically that would look, when you first log in, you're gonna see something that looks like this. Click on your domain name, um, go into SSL slash TLS. We wanna make sure that we're set up on flexible right here. Uh, that's all you'll need to do on this page. The next thing you'll need to do is go to Edge Certificates and click on Order and SSL. Uh, you'll wanna make sure that you use uh, the free, the current certificate, um, and that's all you'll need to do, but make sure that you've got an Edge Certificate uh, set up there as well. Uh, then if we scroll down, always use HTTPS, that's important. Um, the minimum TLS version should be set to one. Opportun opportunistic encryption should be on. TLS 1.3 should be on. Automatic HTTPS rewrites should be on. Uh, that will force, like even if you just type in, you know, whatever.mydomain.com, it will automatically force it to be HTTPS uh, so that there's no chance to uh, enter a non-secure URL there and possibly have traffic stolen. Uh, that's why we're doing this whole thing in the first place and using Cloudflare SSLs. So we wanna make sure that that is on. Um, and then that should be pretty much all you'll have to do there. The origin server and the host names, you don't need to do anything with either of those. Uh, so that's all you'll need to do in order to get Cloudflare set up. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is actually create two files on our server. Now, normally we would set up a container with uh, either uh, going in and manually creating it, or we might create a stack. Um, unfortunately, because uh, my server isn't running in swarm mode, it won't accept version three uh, schema for stacks. Unfortunately, uh, traffic uh, version 2.07 is written in a version three stack. Uh, so we can't actually do that unless we're in swarm mode. I don't wanna be in swarm mode. So we're gonna do this through a shell uh, program like Putty. I've actually got both of the files that we need 
uh, created in a text file, uh, one file or one text file for each of the, the files that we're going to put on our server. Uh, it's just easier to edit the files in a text command or a text uh, program, uh, whether it's Notepad or Notepad++ or whatever. It's easier to do it there, uh, get everything set up and then copy and paste it into uh, the shell program and not have to edit it there. It's just my personal preference. Uh, you can uh, do this however you'd like, but this is how I'm going to do it. So. Uh, the first thing we're going to have is a, dynam a dynamic .yaml or yaml file. Um, all of this will be available in the blog post linked in the description down below. Uh, just so you know, you don't have to try to copy this based on what's on my screen. You can actually copy this uh, from the files located in the description or in the blog post in the description rather. So. Uh, first things first, we've got a dynamic .ym, .yaml file. Uh, you're not going to need to edit anything here. It's just know that we're going to have to copy and paste this into the shell command here in a little bit. The next thing we've got is a docker compose.yml file. Uh, and so if I open that up, this is a bit more involved than we normally see. Uh, this is actually going to use three different ports versus one or sometimes two. Um, and there's going to be a lot of different commands that we're going to have to use here. Most of these, however, we're not going to change. There's going to be very little about this that we actually will change. Um, so just know that you will have to have port 80, port 8080, and port 443 available. Uh, now, ports 80 and 443 are non-negotiable. Uh, that's how traffic does what it does. Uh, port 8080 uh, is the, the port that you'll go to for your dashboard to take a look at what's going on in traffic. You can change that, but uh, I'm just going to leave it on port 8080 for the sake of this video. Now, below that, uh, we've like I said, we've got a bunch of commands that we need to deal with. Um, the API in secure, uh, that's just saying, uh, or do you want this to be available on a non-secure connection? Probably, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, the dashboard we want that to set we want that to be set to true most likely uh, once you get it set up you can change that to false um, but just for right now we're going to leave it true uh, debugging we want that on just in case we run into issues it's always good to have debugging available so that we can see what's going on in our server logs uh, below that, it's actually uh, dictating what level of server logs we're going to uh, be dealing with here. In this case, it's uh, at, at the debug level. There are different levels to this. You can actually go check that out on Traffic's website as far as what levels are available there. Uh, debug is pretty much good enough for what you need to do here. Um, and Docker or providers, Docker equals true. This just tells Traffic to communicate with Docker. That's all that's saying there. Uh, providers Docker exposed by default. Uh, I recommend this being set to false, like I've got it here. Uh, basically, if you set it to true, then everything on your Docker uh, server uh, will be exposed to traffic. And I'm sure there will be things on your server that you don't want exposed to the internet. So uh, set that to false, and then you can manually turn these on one by one as you need to. Uh, below that, provider uh, file name or file.filename uh, dynamic.yaml. We've already talked about that. We've got that file. Uh, we're not going to do anything with it other than just put it on the server and let uh, the Docker compose file uh, work with it as it needs to. So the provider Docker network, uh, we're actually going to have to create a web, uh, or a network on Docker called web. That's pretty straightforward. We'll do that here in just a minute. Uh, below that, the entry points for web uh, will be port 80. Um, there's also an option to put that on port 443. You'd only do that if you're using Let's Encrypt. But because we're handling everything through Cloudflare, uh, we don't need to put a 443 address on here. Uh, we can just leave everything on port 80. Uh, below that, we're telling it uh, in the volumes, we're telling this to connect to the Docker socket. Again, that's a communication protocol between uh, traffic and Docker. That's all that is. Uh, and then we're also going to mount that, uh, dot, that dynamic.yaml file that we've talked about a couple of times already. Uh, the network uh, below this, we're just saying, hey, uh, use the, the web network. Um, and then below that, we've got some labels. And the first label here is uh, telling traffic or telling this to be enabled on traffic. Uh, you could set this to false and it wouldn't trigger on traffic. There'd be no traffic going uh, to this container. Um, but just know that that's what that's there for is to turn traffic on and off for this container. Uh, below that, we've actually got uh, a router set up uh, for a monitoring uh, domain name uh, that I don't actually ever use. Uh, so you could actually access your traffic on monitor dot 
yourdomainname.com. You can actually set monitor to be whatever you'd like it to be. Um, the problem that I have with it uh, is it's only good if you're going to be uh, monitoring your network remotely. It's fine if you want to do that, but just know that uh, if you do that and somebody finds that URL, they can then find all of the subdomains that you've got set up on your server, uh, which is kind of a security issue. So uh, I actually don't even set up monitor most of the time in my uh, in my Cloudflare account, just know that you can. Uh, that's what that line is there for. And then the traffic router API service, we're just gonna use an internal API for that uh, to make sure that everything is communicating. And below that, we've got networks web, external true. That's just saying that we're gonna connect to that network. The first thing we actually need to do over here is go to Portainer, uh, go to networks, uh, and then click on add new uh, network and then just type in web, uh, leave it as a bridge, that's fine, and then click on create the network. So we need to create a couple of files on our network now. Uh, we're gonna create the YAML file and we'll create the YML file uh, for the Docker Compose. So uh, what we'll do, I am logged in to uh, my server already. Uh, so if I do a, um, an LS there, I, you can see I've got a CSGO folder on there and that's all I need, or uh, that's all I've got on there for right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say uh, MKDIR, which is make directory. Um, and then I'm gonna say traffic, like so. And then I'm gonna uh, change directory uh, into traffic. And then I'm gonna create a couple of files. Uh, I'm gonna type in nano, and I'm gonna type in uh, dynamic.yaml, and I'll press enter. Uh, so then I need to come back over to here and grab this. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a select all, copy, and I'm gonna come back over to here. I'm gonna paste this. I'm gonna press Control O to save, and then press Enter, and then Control X. Oops, there we go. Um, and now we've created that file. We're done with that file. Don't need to do anything else with it up to this point, or after this point, rather. Uh, so we can actually go ahead and uh, close that file. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say nano uh, docker-compose.yml and Enter. And then once you've got all of this configured the way you want it, uh, with uh, if you want to set up your subdomain, you can do that. Uh, and once you've got all of this, uh, just again, select all, copy, come over here and paste. Again, control O, enter, control X. And now we've created that file as well. So that's all there is to that. Uh, the next thing we need to do is actually uh, execute that Docker Compose file. And the way we're gonna do that is by typing uh, docker dash uh, oops, compose.yml, nope, docker, <laughs> I've, I've done that in the past, docker compose up minus D, like that, and then we'll press enter. So now it's gonna go through this process of uh, setting up traffic on the server. Uh, this actually shouldn't take too long, and now we're done already. So if we come back over to here, uh, we should see it in stacks. There's traffic in the stack, uh, but because it was created outside of Portainer, we don't have access to this in stacks. Uh, however, we can open it up and we can see uh, that it is doing uh, everything that it needs to do uh, in order to set everything up. Uh, so we're, right now it says it's no, or no default certificate generating one. We'll give this a few minutes and uh, then we'll check it out. Uh, and the way you can actually go in and see if this is set up yet or not, uh, is you can go to your uh, IP address for the server, which is gonna be for me, 238, and then we'll add port 8080 to that. Okay, so now traffic is set up. That's all there is to setting up traffic, believe it or not. Uh, but what I do wanna do here is show you how to uh, take a pre-existing container. Uh, in this case, like I have, uh, let's see, uh, I've got AirSonic. Uh, set up as a container on my network, or on my on my server rather. So if we want to then uh, make it so that we can access uh, AirSonic uh, from uh, from the internet, from when we're out and about, we want to listen to music that's on our home server. What we'll do is we'll actually go into AirSonic. We'll click on Duplicate and Edit. Um, what we'll actually want to do here is actually is delete this port. But before I do that, I just want to show you that it is working. Uh, Two thirty eight on port forty forty. Uh, here we go, this is working. I was playing with this this morning already. Uh, so that's all you've got to just, just make sure that it's working first. Next thing we're gonna do is actually delete that port. Uh, then we're gonna scroll down to labels and we're gonna add three labels to this. And then I'm gonna come down here and grab some notes. 
So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say traffic enable. Uh, again, this is when we tell traffic that it's okay to talk to this container. Uh, for that, we're gonna say true. Oops, true, like that. Um, then we're gonna, uh, we're gonna set up a router for it. Now, because this is Air Sonic, what I wanna do here is grab that. Uh, we've got uh, traffic HTTP routers, um, and then you're gonna give it the name of your container there. And the entry point here is going to be web. Uh, that's telling it to grab or to hook onto the web network that we created earlier. That's all we're gonna do there. Um, so then we're gonna say, um, again, I gotta change that to AirSonic. Uh, you need to make sure that these are always uh, based on the name of your container. Otherwise, if you've got uh, two containers um, and you've got, you know, like AirSonic on both of them uh, for these labels, uh, neither one of them will work. Uh, so you need to make sure that each one has a unique identifier to it. All right, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell it what URL to use. Um, so we're gonna say the host is gonna be music.dbtechdemo.com. And then once we've got that, we can go ahead and click on deploy the container. Oops, I lied. There's one more thing we have to do here. Uh, we actually have to go over here and switch it to the web network. And then we can click on deploy and say replace. Now, while that's thinking about what it's doing, what we can actually do here is go back uh, over to Cloudflare. We're gonna set up a C name. Um, and basically what that does is it lets us set up a subdomain um, that will uh, pull an IP address from something else. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say music, and then the target is gonna be uh, at, and that's just gonna grab the URL um, that is set up already here for this account. Um, so basically if I set, if I change the IP address for this A record, music will automatically follow. Uh, so we don't have to change the IP address in multiple records. By setting up a C name, we can just change it once and then it will uh, be a, it will affect all of the things that have the uh, C name record attached to it. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. So uh, we've got our C name, we've got music set up as the subdomain. We're gonna point that to dbtechdemo.com. We'll click save. We wanna make sure it's proxied. So once we've got that set up, uh, we can come back over here. We'll go ahead and make sure uh, that this is running. So then I should be able to go to music.dbtechdemo.com. And if this works, uh, like I think it should, uh, there we go. Now we can go ahead and log in. And just like that, now we have our music library on AirSonic available to the internet. Okay guys, there you go. There's how to set up traffic using Cloudflare for your SSL. Uh, and that way you can attach your existing or new containers to the internet uh, with some security and not having to worry about uh, adding ports and all kinds of weird things to your URL to access them. Traffic's very, very cool in the way it handles, uh, well, traffic on your server. So a pretty simple thing to set up. I hope you found the video helpful. And if you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. It would really help me out a bunch. Um, also, if you're interested in this kind of content, again, I've got lots more content like this coming out. Uh, like I said, this was just a precursor to another upcoming video that I want to do about setting up uh, file cloud or cloud file uh, so that you can have uh, kind of your own uh, file management, uh, phone backup, remote storage available to you from basically anywhere. So that is definitely coming up very, very soon as well. Uh, so definitely if you're interested in this kind of content, get subscribed. Lots of new stuff coming out very, very soon. Uh, before I wrap this up, of course, there's the obligatory uh, ways to support the channel. Uh, down below, there are a couple of links. Uh, one of them is for coffee. Uh, that's kind of a one-time tip jar. Uh, that money just goes straight to my PayPal account. Uh, However, if you're interested in becoming a patron over on Patreon, there are a few different levels of uh, membership there. The $5 level and even the $10 level, of course, will get you access to a members only Patreon uh, Discord server, a members only Discord server. There's the word I'm looking for. Um, so definitely check that out if you're interested in uh, having access to that. Um, but I think with all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.